Google is back at it again in the AI art generation or AI image generation space. Today's video isn't specifically about this, but this is a little piece of AI news that I really wanted to open up this video with because it is absolutely just way too fascinating and not to share with you viewers at home. This is Google's new AI research dream booth fine-tuning text image diffusion models such as Dolly 2, Stable Diffusion, or Midjourney, for example. This is, of course, Google's own in-house model that they won't share with us, Imogen slash party, for subject-driven generations. So this would be more specific subjects. Essentially, how this works, I'll, I'll go off of the direct quote they have here, it's like a photo booth, but once the subject is captured, it can be synthesized wherever your dreams take you. So these are real input images that someone captured of a dog, and a very cute dog at that. And then what they're able to do with this new Dream Booth AI that Google has developed is they're able to put this dog in the Acropolis, for example, or right in front of it, and that is a beautiful photorealistic rendition it looks like this dog that this real dog that they took photos of has actually been transported into this image here of the acropolis or it's, it's all fully ai generated so it's not like this image of the acropolis already existed the ai knows what the acropolis looks like and knows how to position the dog right in front of the acropolis They've got some other example as well, so we've got him swimming around, and it did a very good job, although it's kind of hard to see because the image is really small. He's missing a back leg, possibly, so it, it did a very close job, though, or inside a doghouse. This one came out really, really fantastic, and it's nice how consistent it is with the look of the dog. For example, the stripe on this dog's face, you can see it goes a little bit more towards the right if we're looking at him from, from our direction. There's a little stripe across his face goes a little bit more towards the right, and it is noticeable in pretty much all of these images. As you can see in, when he's in the bucket there, we can see that that stripe goes more towards the right than the left side. Not so much sleeping, but you know the stripe is still there at the very least. We can definitely still see it in the haircut it moves a little bit towards the right rather than the left but it's definitely still there so yeah this is like a sort of very advanced version of ai photoshop i suppose where you capture images of a subject and you're able to just make them do or whatever you want pretty much you can imagine this technology could be very dangerous like you could take a bunch of images of your friend and then frame him for some kind of a horrible crime it makes sense that this isn't released to the public as of right now, but it is very interesting research nonetheless. And, you know, this is a very long paper. I'll link it down below. You guys can look into it. Here are some more input images and examples. They use Dolly 2's variations as an example here, and they notice they're pointing out like that it doesn't pick up the fine details of the input image. The fidelity isn't as good, they say, and the new contexts aren't as good. This one, the new context is there with the Imogen. Of course, Google's model that is completely closed, but the fidelity apparently with Imogen is not there. And now they're saying with Dream Booth, so this is still some sort of subsidiary of Google's AI research that's not directly related to Imogen. I assume this is using Party. This is fidelity and context now. They're both good. And, you know, they go through the entire fine tuning and inference approach to solving this so if you're very interested in the programming side of things and the actual math behind all of this but yeah it does a fantastic job it puts the vase in the ocean you know very similar to the input images so this is very exciting technology i would love to play around with stuff like this one day in the future but i imagine this is pretty far down the line considering how dangerous technology like this could possibly be but you can also use it for stuff like combining images of your dog for example with another species and this also works very well or you could change the colors of vehicles as well super awesome as well as the backgrounds too you'll notice in these photos so just tons of capabilities such as you can do outfits I mean, you can already do similar stuff to this with in-painting, but this does seem like it's a lot more easy and simple. You can just take a picture of your dog and say, I want this dog, you know, on the streets of Paris wearing this specific outfit, and we'll just output it. Very incredible. Stuff like this gets me very excited. I would love to play with technology like this sometime soon. We need higher quality AI. I mean, the AI we already have is very fantastic, but I just, I just want more. It's like an addiction, this AI stuff. I swear to God. I, I guess that's why my channel exists in the first place is to satisfy your AI addictions. 
Anyways, enough babbling about Google's Dream Booth. Let's get into what we're actually talking about today. This is Art Breeder. I don't know how I haven't made a video about Art Breeder already. I've tried it before. This is a great AI model. It uses Stable Diffusion. Before, I guess it didn't used to use Stable Diffusion, but they've got their new collage. This is very similar to Image to Image, which we've looked at on the channel before, but you can see some examples. It's basically like guided diffusion where you draw your own little image and it will slowly sort of guide the image towards what you actually want to see. And yeah, it's just a really fun art program to try out and you can share your works with the community as well. That's another portion of this. They do have a specific portrait breeder. So if you like making portraits, for example, they do have this where apparently <laughs> they have this little interactive demo here where you can change the age of this woman from being 100 to negative 100 and even make her more of a specific gender or you can make her look like a blue alien. And you can also explore some of the different images that have been created with Art Breeder. But yeah, Art Breeder allows for quite a lot of fun, especially with their collage. So we're going to be giving that a little test shot today. And you can see I've already been busy with Art Breeder collage. I did make a Pixar render of a lemon creature already, just so we could start off. And yeah, you can see it definitely does use stable diffusion, but you can get some really cool outputs by using Art Breeder collage. For example, if I take this prompt here, Pixar Render Lemon Creature, we've got this pretty nice image, which I use the collage to make. Now, if I just straight up run this in Stable Diffusion, we are not going to be getting an image that is that coherent. Like, yeah, we got something here. It's just sort of like a lemon eyeball thing, and it's pretty cool looking, but it's nowhere near as coherent as this right here. That is because of the way collage works. So let's actually get into collage. So here is the input image I gave the AI to work off of here. And that's sort of what Art Breer Collage is. We have all of these different tools for creating different art. By the way, this interface is awesome. Art Breer Collage has a really nice little interface. Let me make it larger for you guys. You can see it a little bit easier. But yeah, I can basically just drag and select and delete or resize or flip all of these different options. You know, you can apply different colors and there is so much different variety to this very nice and easy to use interface. Of course, we could just straight up insert images if we want. We can upload our own from our computer, but they have a ton of really great pre-baked images that we can use so for example, snail right here is selected. So if I wanted to make like Gary in real life, for example, I can grab this image of a shell real quick. As soon as I click on it, it's going to appear in my little generation box here. You know, I can rotate it however I want. And remember this image we're creating right here is just going to be a base image for the final generation that Stable Diffusion will create. So we're just guiding the generation essentially. And now I can also pick basic shapes. So we'll just, yeah, we'll do Gary, why not? We'll click on, We'll add this shape as well here. So this is going to be Gary's body. As you can see, it's the wrong color though. So we need to make him blue. We'll go here and change this thing to blue, like the color of Gary. As you can see now, it's also on top of the snail. So what I'm going to do is right click it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is send back one and that will change up the layers here. So it's now behind this layer, making it behind it. I can also just straight up draw shapes if I want. So I can do it essentially like this with the mouse. You can give them little snail eyes, for example. I'm going to go ahead and look up some eyeball images to use for Gary's eyeballs. And he's got eyes that are kind of this color. These are horrifying eyeballs, but they definitely will get the job done here for our realistic image of Gary the snail. We'll go grab another one of those images. And we can also put him somewhere, so we'll just look up underwater and maybe... Yes, we can find some underwater imagery here. So this will be our little background for the entire image. And I'll just drag that to the bottom. So now Gary is going to be fully underwater here in our image. We've created the base that the AI is going to take this image and base it off of. I'm going to go down here and we'll say photo of Gary the snail from SpongeBob in real life and this slider down here is very important this is the ai render intensity so we'll just leave this in the middle for now and we'll click render and now it is going to take this image and synthesize it into a more formed ai image and you'll definitely be able to tell what it's based off of here and we're not a member so it's free to use for us but we do have to wait for our position in line to fill up for our generation to happen 
So yeah, you can upgrade and pay if you want faster generation times. We can see it slowly generate there, and that is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, if we don't like it, we can go ahead and re-roll it as well. And there it goes again. That one was definitely a little bit better. We definitely got way more different of a shell, and it's actually a little bit more coherent with where he is on the sea floor and everything. That's, this one's actually pretty nice. So if I wanted to save this, I could either save it to my profile here on artbreeder.com, or I could download it to my computer. And I'll download the before and after here so you can see we took this image and we converted it into this image. Pretty cool stuff. So it's a very interesting concept and idea for creating AI art. You just create the base and then say, all right, AI, do the rest of the work for me, fill it in. I'm interested in seeing if we take this image and up the intensity of this AI and rerun it. Okay, by upping that intensity, we got something that is a lot scarier. Just some sort of mash of shells and... I mean, it's definitely under the, the sea floor. Pretty terrifying, though. Something very interesting we can check out is we can see everyone else's AI imagery as well that you can pick from. And all of this, of course, can be uploaded as well. So lots of really nice stuff has been created. There is a lot of creative freedom that can be had with Artbreeder. And I just think it is a very interesting way of making art with AI, you know, there is some more human element uh, in this. And I think that is especially interesting. We don't have a lot of that these days. It's all just text to image. And, you know, this actually has like a building point to it where you can build your own AI art. The portrait side of this definitely is very competitive as well. In those photorealistic faces do definitely look very photorealistic. So I think this AI does a pretty good job of incorporating all these different pieces together to make an interactive AI art app. And I would love to see more stuff like this in the future of AI generated art rather than just the basic old boring, well, it's not really boring, but text to image, you know, it's, it's, it can be more than just text image. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for you today. Please, if you guys generate any cool art with Artbreeder, I would absolutely love to see it on my Discord server. So please go ahead and at me on my Discord server in the AI Generations channel with any cool art that you decide to make after watching this video. Thank you so much. I'm Avidu Productions. Link to my Discord down in the description of this video and make sure you subscribe and check out some of my other videos if you haven't already. Goodbye.